in India in the beginning, what was you had a guru and some few pupils. Yes. You always looked for your guru. That's right, the mentor. There was always a few pupils, so you learned that way. And that's how, and we're coming back to that. Exactly. You know, today's instructor is not so much an authority, authority yeah. figure, but more a guru, an exception manager. You know, come to me when I'll come to you when I need help, and, and an auditor, someone who assesses people's well, in progress. India, of course, they, they looked at the guru as the source of wisdom. <laughs> okay, and that uh, that uh, was too much that way. Yeah, there was maybe too much yeah. deference of respect, et cetera. The, the good news about millennials um, yeah. is they're oblivious to authority, so right. um, in general. And so they don't do that deference. That you have to earn respect from a millennial. Yeah, and that's, that's a little bit of our nirvana. So um, woe to the many students who had to live through you know, the typical classroom. Um, but then learning evolved a little bit, and we got e-learning. Um, you all saw the Gartner study in 1999 that e-learning was going to take over the world and that the classroom would be dead by 2005. <laughs> and here we are, uh, 2006, last time I checked, it's not dead. Uh, but the classroom really, ILT is, is something we all need to embrace and find new innovative ways to embrace it instead of replace it. Um, so those two are kind of, you know, going to find a way to, to collaborate in harmony. One was the 21st century classroom where we took the classroom and put it online. But if you use the same paradigm with respect to the you know, kind of authoritative approach, putting it online doesn't solve the problem. You need to make it more collaborative. But there was one in very interesting thing that has occurred in the virtual classroom um, that differentiates it from the physical classroom, and that is the concept of anonymity. Students uh, lose their inhibition to collaborate and to participate when they're online because they're anonymous. So that's something to, to keep in mind, one of the strengths. And then the only child um, of e-learning, there's the prescriptive approach and blended, one of my favorite graphics. <laughs> the brain in the blender, which begat many modes of uh, computer-based training, labs, mentoring, test books. We got that whole multi-sensory approach. So this is kind of where we're at, where we have some virtual classrooms, some prescriptive, blended, multi-sensory e-learning happening. But really, this is a much more structured approach. And we'll learn in a second, maybe structured you know, isn't the best way to, to, to approach things. So what's the next in the, you know, the evolution of, of learning? So um, we'll start here on the, on the left-hand side, uh, structured learning, which if you look on the active to passive spectrum, you know, kind of goes from blended learning to classroom as far as the participation of the student. This is more self-directed. Okay, this is more teacher dependent. Um, so the participation level of the student. Um, and this is what we call just in case. Great example of just in case learning is uh, I have a degree in neurogenetics from Berkeley. Just in case, <laughs> I wanted to go off and become a brain surgeon, which of course I didn't. I went to Disney, <laughs> um, you know, which required a brain transplant once I got there. Um, but that whole just in case, I mean, now I'm speaking about learning, and I guess it's kind of somewhat related to the brain, but it has nothing to do with genetics. Um, so wouldn't it have been cool if I could have found a way to make my learning maybe a little more you know, unstructured? Okay, and this is where a little bit maybe like India, you know, observation and experience on the same, um, the same spectrum. So uh, up here we have, you know, the observation level, the experience is getting your hands dirty and actually participating, and this we call on the job. So a lot of learning happens every day, and it happens in very unstructured ways on the job. So the nexus of learning is that middle ground, we're bridging that gap between the just-in-case element, the structured element of the classroom, e-learning, and then the unstructured, kind of more spontaneous on the job. Yes? What would you put, I mean, uh, something that, uh, say, a program that's set up to um, capture and retell stories, where would you put that in that Ooh. chart? So it's kind of structured because you've maybe got a uh -huh. template, uh -huh. template for how you're, you're kind of captured. But but the stories themselves the are stories kind themselves of are, are are almost documented experiences, right? So that would be on the bridge. 
that's a great example of something where you know we're trying to bridge, we're trying to create some elements here where people can take maybe on the job, and we're going to talk about it in just a second. There's some huge benefits to structured learning, and the key one is knowledge, is the management of the knowledge, right? You can track it, you can catalog it, um, you can deploy it in a personalized way, um, but it's not on demand. It's not experiential like on the job is. So that, you know, so it's finding a way to marry those. So you're saying that there are some systems which can document stories. Are those stories searchable, tagged? Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. why you would create a template so that to make it easier to, to classify and, and tag and, and retrieve the information. You know, Google, a, I, I need a story about you know, this about bridges and it pops up some interesting right. stuff. I could, I'd love that actually for speaking and writing. <laughs> yeah, to uh, follow on to that point, uh, we just did a pilot where we're really looking at, at, at the same question from the standpoint of the culture of people in technology and engineering. Mm. And the question was, are people who work for NASA pull or push uh, Consumers. People, yeah, right. Of, lear of learning or knowledge? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like we all have stuff pushed at us all the time. Email. Uh, and <laughs> lots of it we prefer not to have pushed, you know, i.e., uh, you know, therefore uh, filters for spam. Yes. But at the same time, you know, the culture of, of pull, we're, People want to go in and, and get stuff when they want to get it, the way they want to get it. Yes. And, and, uh that's a very key element of kind of some new learning models is, um, is that you know, a lot of students today, and certainly the millennials, want the pull. I mean, they're used to going to Google. Um, I, was, we were, I, I was at a presentation a few days ago in New York with Thompson, and Thompson, um, one of the interesting things they said, the Thompson Net G, the, the learning part of the organization, said their biggest competitor is not another learning company, it's Google. Because that's where people go for learning. That's where people go for content. That's all pull. Um, now, you know, there's RSS programs that are maybe a little bit more push. You get to de determine what kind of information you want. Um, but I think today's student clearly wants to be engaged more in the learning process. And, wants, and in India, it sounded a little bit like pull in the sense that, that they went to the guru when they needed it for the specific information that they need. I'm going to show a video clip a little bit later of a perfect example of pull. Um, in kind of a nirvana state. I, I found um, the, the perfect example, unfortunately it doesn't exist, but the, it's because it's from a movie, <laughs> but a perfect example of the nexus of learning. And it does involve a little bit of that. So, so our goal is to get up here to the psychedelic brain. Yes? So I was just about to say, but got, taking one stage further, isn't it? You know, with the learning, with, we all want to be in control. We all want the pull, but shouldn't be there for we're using some of the new technology, some of the things that we're working with at the moment, understand what I'm pulling at any given time. What I'm reading, what I'm writing, what I'm browsing. They're watching. And they're watching. Yeah. And then they're pushing. Based on that. Based on that. Yeah. Based. Yeah. It's almost passive pulling, if you could call it. It is. No, it's, it's, it's um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it, it, it's collaborative pulling. I mean, it's, it's, it's auto-pulling. It's auto-pulling. It's yeah. auto-pulling. You configure it, and it goes out and pulls for you. And one in this... No, it's not even, no, no, no. You're not training anything. It's training you. It's, it's watching you. You literally are using some of the latest algorithms that are actually understanding what you're reading or browsing at that time. It's nothing to do with agents. There's no searching whatsoever. That's, so it, that's it's not a way to accomplish this. Yeah, it's, but it's, yeah. Ta it's taking the 